everyone and welcome to the 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. session of the 2020 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are happy to introduce a presentation called Whoso Pulleth Out This Sword of This Stone and Anvil is Rightwise King Born. Our speaker is Heike Phil. Heike Philp is CEO of Let's Talk Online SBRL, based in Brussels, Belgium, immersive language education specialist. Heike co-initiated four European funded projects, Lancelot, Avalon, Camelot, and Guinevere, to develop accredited and certified teacher training courses for language teaching and learning in real time at a distance. She co-owns Edunation Islands in Second Life, regions in OpenSim, and servers in Minecraft. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of sessions, and the full schedule of events. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC20. So welcome again, everybody, and let's begin the session. Over to you, Heike. Thank you very much, Olive Tree, and thank you so much for having me here at OSCC. It's always a highlight at the end of the year, and it's such a highlight to be here amongst friends. And uh, welcome to this presentation. I know this is a, a weird kind of uh, starter, whoso pulleth out the sword. You can imagine that this is part of well, King Arthur and his knights, that was written, that kind of quote was written by Thomas Mallory in, in 1485. And uh, the legend goes back to the 5th and the 6th century. And there you go. thanks, Leah, for cheering me up here. Um, this tale uh, of King Arthur has been accompanying me uh, ever since Lancelot. And at one time I thought, well, this has nothing to do really with uh, language teaching and learning with modern tools. But yet I'm going back and back again to the very um, story. Um, the Knight Lancelot, the beautiful Queen Guinevere, the mysterious Merlin, and the French Arthurian romances that reaches back to centuries, medieval ages. Um, we were talking about Camelot, um, epic battles um, against the Saxons, the enemies, and Arthur's quest for the Holy Grail. So I still have quite a few names left if I continue to do this series. Um, it's It's been four year funded projects already. So it's been a real, real blessing for me personally on a professional level to have been working with some 25 universities on that one. So Many thanks to listening to my tales, and it's been 15 years of research and development in that. And now it's also taken me equally that long almost to get into OpenSim. I've been in Second Life for 13 years. Um, the, um, um, before I go on with actually talking a little bit about the upcoming projects and also the upcoming EVO sessions, I'd like to ask you, the audience, for your opinion and your feedback. And you know, I really like to do this interactive and I'd love to ask you many questions. And I have resorted to creating a Mentimeter and would, if you can multitask, listen to my ranting away here, as well as um, um, fill in, take your mobile, go to menti.com and answer a few questions. And at the end of this talk, I would like to read the answers to you, um, which I can't screen share like I normally do, but I can always like um, read them off you, what everybody else has been answering. And thank you very much for doing this. menti.com, I say the number out loud, also for those on the live stream, it's 8633862. That's the number that you put in in order to answer a few questions. Some of them are straightforward um, and some are just uh, asking for your opinion. And I'm very, very curious. In the meantime, I'm just going to continue with this um, presentation to talk about our upcoming projects. And uh, we, uh, first of all, 
I'm very, very proud to be uh, this year to have an expo region in Expo 4. And uh, I've been able to place this wonderful medieval village, which was part of the um, OAR file that we got from the Greenware project, because in during the Grenier project, we already have been in second uh, open sim with the island called uh, Guinevere, and this is the uh, Castle Exploria, and uh, we're very happy to have this. Thanks to Nick Swart, who built it. So this could be such a beautiful back set, backdrop for machinima, for role playing, for language production. And this is what we language educators really love to have. Um, and this is why we've now resorted next. Uh, this is coming up in January, February. This is an EVO session that we are planning. Um, it's EVO is part of um, a larger event for language educators. And we would like to start to learn how to build in second uh, in OpenSim. And sorry if I keep saying second life, it's just part of the nature. So why did we choose OpenSim though, when we're long time second lifers here? Um, because last year's EVO session, we spent equally five weeks in a workshop with approximately 100 educators, 150 we had were. And um, we evaluated 3D, environments and uh, 3D and virtual reality environments. Um, we, we did this um, uh, up to 18 solutions we looked at. Yeah, We created an excessive evaluation grid. Uh, we later on voted on our most favorite and all like with the view of language learning and teaching what is what is good, what is expensive, what is um, uh, what supports voice of IP and all of the different categories that we came up with, especially can you edit the environment and not. So we voted and the winner was OpenSim. So after evaluating 18 different ones, and, and I'm quite happy if you go to this link uh, that I just pasted in, in, in the chat, um, to go and look at the evaluation grid, uh, how we went through um, in great detail. We looked at 13, uh, very intensely have a lot of recordings of sessions where people introduced us to these, and we did that at great length. Now, come OpenSim. So that's the next project, what we want to do. We want to start doing role play, storytelling, fan fiction. The EVA session coming up is called Immersive um, Storytelling. But how do you do story when you don't even know how to build? <laughs> that's the challenge. Yeah, this is what we say. We want you to be honest, but most of us are spoiled of Second Life and the marketplace. And so when we go into OpenSim here, it is the challenge. <laughs> yeah. And please uh, be so kind and look at Mentimeter, menti.com and, and look uh, whether you can answer some questions. Thank you very much for doing this whilst I'm presenting here. I'll read the answers off. Do you want me to repeat the number? It's 86338632, menti.com. So this is just an example of this beautiful uh, role playing that we can do. And uh, when it comes to fan fiction, even more. But as I said, where do we get a hotel and where do we uh, find even um, Harry Potter scene? or other fan fiction, yeah? So this is what uh, greatly occupied us. Um, this is why we've now set out to learn how to build. <laughs> and the first thing we did was we rented some four regions in um, uh, uh, Kitely, yeah? And the four regions in Kitely are at the moment, there's only one of the four regions is now occupied with an OAR file. That's the Guinevere Island OAR file that we were able to import. And the other three is a bear. So you on the left hand side, you see the OS region. On the right hand side, you see Second Life. Yeah, as we have at the moment, we have two, um, two uh, regions in, in Second Life. As I said, Kidely is wonderful. Eileen, I totally agree with you. So here, this is what we've got there already. This is part of this beautiful OAR file. I was so happy to be able to import it. it was such a blast, yeah. And um, 
Um, so the castle is there. There's a medieval village is there. There's also the uh, um, an orientation pathway inside the very first castle uh, explorer in several languages. So like for new ones, uh, there's a little shop with some clothes. Um, and then we hope to continue the story of King Arthur and his knight. And this is where it comes to the uh, the next highlight of uh, what I wanted to to. Um, yeah, here it is. Ah, da, da. You know, my new ear funded project proposal still proposal stage, guys. So we still haven't got the OK from the EU, but um, and it's been a very, very special proposal in itself because um yeah but anyway we we applied for one and uh, it's uh, it was under the erasmus plus extraordinary covid 19 response call call for proposals so it was a very special one it was the end of october Thank you, Leah. That was very sweet. Good luck. I'm crossing fingers. I was hoping to get the OK or not OK before this talk, as usual. But they said it will probably be a uh, beginning of next year. So let's keep the fingers crossed. But what, what does Excalibur stand for? That's the big, big mystery. Exchanging language through immersive building in real time. And if you remember back, uh, Guinevere was all about games used in engaging virtual environments for real time language education. So real time has been my my sort of running theme. Uh, Camelot before was creating machinima to empower live online language teaching and learning. Um, before that, Avalon was access to virtual and ex action learning live online. And uh, <laughs> yes, thanks, Frank. And um, the very first one, Lancelot, uh, still the best one, to be honest. I've been <laughs> not so creative after that. Lancelot was about language learning with certified live online teachers. Thank you, William. That's very nice, Excalibur. So yes, we're looking forward to language exchange through immersive building and, and a lot of it, to be honest, will be Minecraft because the extraordinary Erasmus Plus COVID-19 response call had a special theme. It had to do with schools and there was a part that says creativity in the schools and there was a part that was um, about, um, I don't know, mm, methodology of teaching hybrid classes in, in, in school. So it had very specific um, two themes and we chose creativity. And so this is why we also decided Minecraft. Besides, one of the project coordinator is a Finnish university and it's the main Finnish university. And they said, look, the company that created Minecraft is just around the corner from us and they've sold it to Microsoft and uh, they were hoping to still do a couple of projects. They're still working at the product. So we're looking forward to that one. So here, just uh, my contact details. And if I may, just have a look now at menti.com, the things that you've been adding to. Here's my little history and story and some of my contact details. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, getting to the um, <clears throat> contact details here. And that's the the end of the speakeasy heart as well. And now I'm going to have a look at menti.com. And if you want to ask questions, be all happy because um, I'm quite, um, you know, happy to, to look at the results. But let me give you the results of Mentimeter. And um, the question, are you a builder? And then 16 people answered yes. Uh, six people said, I can res ready-made objects and zero person answered no. Um, and there were 22 replies. So that is amazing really and kind of expected because this group of people is really made up of builders and it's a lot of long timers here and I'm really, really happy. But those in uh, on the live stream, please also uh, respond. So what is your professional background? 
Oh, somebody said I'm an old farmer, a university lecturer, computer software developer, educational technology program, technology coordination, video web multimedia production, academic librarian, material for aviation inspector, sorry if I'm reading fast, programmer, C++, Java embedded, retired software developer, software engineer. This is a really highly qualified um, group of people. Um, so, amazing faculty online teachers look why am i not seeing this one here this um okay i'll have to go and do the presentation model a medical laboratory scientist it system engineer educator biology 40 plus years development and system administrator 20 years in telecom 20 years higher ed um, instructional designer higher education my god elt eap educator assessor the next question, are you use, using OpenSIM for teaching? Yes, six people said no, seven people said four are saying not yet, but I'm testing it. Five said no, but I'm curious. The question, do you have any ideas to make OpenSIM more attractive to the general audience? Not really yet, no. No, just looking at curious, thank you. Perhaps some welcome new user training. Individuals could post info on social media about projects in OpenSIM. Yes, I formed a company to advance VR, AR, MR and say no, yes. Advertise, nobody knows we're here. I know many Minecraft users who are totally frustrated by its lack of tools and would gladly move here cost uh, more live streaming, share more turnkey simulations and build with newbies, making the viewer easier for s new users. The scene gate project looks like a good approach. Oh, very nice. Still a bit basic compared to SL. If we had better avatars, it might help. Difficulties in sound are often off-putting and there's no support. Yes, well, it's an, as attractive as any virtual world to make. It is making it easier to use, offer strong support and create good content that matters. It's difficult because OpenSIM is in such a middle ground. It's more ex immersive than some platforms, but not nearly as immersive as other platforms. The core dev community is fractured and contentious, so it's less and less reliable in my mind. Simply fly simplify users clients clients viewers sorry they must be intuitive for the user recreate real imaginary worlds on vir virtual world islands and better interface so these are the ideas to make OpenSIM more attractive to the general audience this is wonderful thank you ever so much i'm really really delighted and um, my last question is, would you be interested in collaborating to create an edutainment region? Yes, say nine people, eight, not sure, depends, four said no. And this is what I'm closing my talk with as I have uh, two minutes left. And I'm sorry, um, did I overlook a question, Olive Tree? Uh, no, no, no questions, but great comments. Oh, fantastic. The Mentimeter, absolutely wonderful. And may I suggest to all of us here present exactly the great kind of group of people I was hoping to meet here, the group of people I'm hoping to collaborate with, how about us creating an edutainment offering in OpenSIM, all together joining, it could be a European theme park, as I'm envisioning it for Excalibur. It could be a Walt Disney theme park. It could be a Harry Potter theme park, <laughs> fan fiction, anything that could have to do with edutainment to create a magnet for the general audience to come to, to have fun, to get some roller coaster rolling and, uh, and then perhaps to stay to learn more. This is my proposal to you all think about it and approach me if you'd like to join me there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Heike. Um, yay for collaboration and uh, thank you for a fantastic uh, session. Um, as a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. 
Following this session is a break, followed by our next session at 9.30 a.m. in this keynote region, entitled, Why is Open Simulator so boring? Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 20 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and explore the Hypergrid 2 resources in OSCC Expo 2 region along with sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again to our speaker and the audience. Enjoy the break.